Hi, um, today I'm uh, going to talk about a new uh, asset store asset that I'm working on. Uh, I call it One Batch. Uh, basically, the idea is um, so traditionally, what people do is they will atlas things, uh, they will take a bunch of um, different textures and put them all onto one texture and then try to you know, get everything using one texture so that you can reduce the number of draw calls. Um, that has a bunch of disadvantages uh, in terms of, okay, well, how many of these textures can I fit on one sheet? Can I tile them? It starts to get uh, kind of messy pretty quick. Um, so rather than doing that, uh, what I've done is write a system that uses texture arrays. Uh, this is something that um, people have been doing manually with uh, Megasplat for a little while. Um, and I finally decided to just make a really nice workflow for it. Um, and so with one batch, what you do is you create uh, a configuration, which holds all the information. So I create this configure. I'm just going to call this rocks. And uh, what I want to show you first is if I hit play on this scene, and then we go over to the frame debugger here, these objects are all set to be statically batched together. Uh, and what we see is that uh, total draw calls right now is 33. And that's because for whatever reason, it can't batch some of these together in all cases. And uh, depending on how it's drawing, it, it produces an optimal batching. And that's because um, there are six different materials uh, being used here. And uh, depending on your material types and things like that, there can be other reasons why things don't batch. Um, so right now we're at 33 draw calls. And what we really want to do is get that lower. Uh, and so what we'd like to do is turn these all into one material with one set of textures. Um, and we'd like that to be nice and automatic and everything. So uh, the way this works is that um, you can, I'm just going to scene view here, and I'm going to select the assets here. So I have all these rocks here. Um, they are all using the standard shader. Um, but they're you know using uh, five or six different materials here. And so let's go to my config again. I'm going to lock the inspector. If you don't know about that little thing, it's pretty useful. Um, I find it a little clunky, but it's, it's pretty useful nonetheless. Uh, and then we can go back to our prefab list here, select all these prefabs, you know, LODs, everything, and just drag it into the list here. So here we have all the objects that we want to combine. Um, and what we can do is there's texture settings for uh, the different types of maps, the sizes, compression, etc. If you're familiar with my other products, uh, some of this stuff will seem very uh, similar um, because it is. Um, and so here I'm setting the default texture size at uh, 2048. Um, and that's not for the whole page because it's not doing atlasing, that's for each texture. And so it's going to use texture arrays to do this. And if you don't know about texture arrays, the way they work is uh, on the GPU, they act as if they're one texture, uh, but they have a whole bunch of textures inside of them. All the textures have to be the same size uh, in a given array. And so what this is gonna do is create arrays for each of the uh, textures um, that the standard shader has. So once we've uh, got a prefab list, we can do this extract from prefab here. And what this will do is go through all of those prefabs, find all the meshes in them, and all the unique materials that they're using and grab all the textures from them. And so what we see here is that we have diffuse, normal, uh, metal, smooth, uh, occlusion, detail, albedo, and detail, normal map being used. Um, and uh, what it's going to do is then uh, put these all into the arrays for us, um, you know, manage the compression, etc. cetera. Uh, and so we could manually add more textures here if we wanted to. Um, or remove them by clearing and deleting the entries. Um, but most of the time you don't need to do anything like that. Uh, there's a button for updating just the textures. So if you change your textures, uh, you can hit that and it'll refresh everything from this config. Uh, but the main magic happens here in this combine function. So if we hit combine, then it's gonna pack all these textures together and it's gonna actually make new meshes for everything and it's going to put it all in the data, uh, all the data right next to our config uh, using the naming convention of the config. So now that that's done, we can go to our um, config here and you see that we now have a material here. Let me unlock my inspector here. 
And this material is a new material that's using um, arrays. And um, we've got a detail albedo array, um, detail normal, occlusion, height map normal, uh, and albedo. And I think I have a bug because it should have assigned the, the metal one, but it didn't, so I'll have to fix that. Um, there we go. So now, uh, and then we have to set the tiling on our detail maps to be similar. And so now you see we have all these rocks. Uh, they're textured just like they were before. Um, but now let's what happens, see what happens when we hit play. So we hit play, we go into our frame bugger, we capture a frame. We can now see that we have 13 draw calls. So we basically saved uh, in this stupid example scene, we basically saved um, two thirds of our draw calls. Uh, and you'll notice now that everything is being statically batched uh, just about as tight as it can. Um, the shadow job only takes three. Uh, the forward render happens in one. Uh, so the batching has been improved quite a bit. Um, you know, if you uh, buy a lot of assets off the asset store, uh, and kit bash a lot of things together, then what you could actually do is go through and basically combine uh, these assets into these um, texture arrayed uh, things before you, or even after, um, and, uh, and basically save a lot of draw calls that way. So, a little more explanation. Um, if, you're, uh, see, if you're not familiar with texture arrays, you can see that this has all of our textures in it. Um, you can see each texture as you click on it. And you'll notice here that this is detail albedo and detail normal happen to be the same on every one. So that's wasting a bunch of memory. So one of the nice things here is that I have this, uh, this looks like it's the standard shader, um, but it also has an option to do a global detail texture, which means instead of using these arrays, we could get rid of those and we could just use a single texture and that'll save us memory uh, and a little bit of performance. Um, so that's pretty good. And then you'll see here it made a rocks meshes uh, asset and generated all new versions of the meshes. Now, why does it do that? Uh, because what it needs to do uh, to know which texture and texture array uh, it's in, it needs to stamp some data on that mesh uh, that I can then look up in the shader and cause it to know how to sample that texture array correctly. Um, so yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, you can actually go over here and hit this revert button and it'll just stick everything back to the way it was. And you can see that now we've reverted to the original materials. Um, and you can see this is in the original rock surface here with this original rock material. Um, and then if we decide that, you know, we'd like to, to reconvert that, um, we can just combine it again. And so everything's pretty automated and easy. Uh, right now it only works with the standard shader, um, the metallic workflow. Um, I may add a uh, specular workflow. Um, now the thing is, is that, um, oh, there's a bug, yeah. If I delete this, it'll, I need to fix it up. Um, and, oops, yeah. Um, let me just, so revision control is always really nice to have when you're working. If you don't use revision control, you're causing yourself problems. Um, it's a very easy way for me to get back if something fails, because I uh, again, this is uh, pr pretty early still. Um, so let me extract again. There we go, our texture list. And now we do a combine. And uh, should work this time. Well, it's easy enough to fix. I can assign the albedo. And so, you know, this just takes arrays instead of um, regular textures. Um, detail normal. Height. Tell me because that doesn't quite work yet. Metallic. Um, so you'll also notice that on the standard shader you have lots of options for like 
adjusting uh, normal strength, thing like, things like that, you notice that you don't have these anymore. Uh, that is because um, there isn't really a great way for me to uh, store that per material information uh, and then get it uh, to um, propagate to the, to the correct uh, settings in the shader. Um, I have some ideas about how I might do this that I'm going to look into uh, before I release this tool. Um, but basically I thought I'd give people a preview of it because uh, I think it's pretty nice. Uh, it's really, really fast. Uh, you can take, you know, some kit bash uh, kit that you bought in the store and optimize it with just a couple clicks uh, and see, you know, big uh, import, uh, performance improvements for your statically batched stuff. Um, and it's not a lot of work. Um, now I'm going to talk about uh, a couple other things just before I wrap this up, which is that, hey, if you're uh, loading things in and out, you're now going to be loading this whole kit. Um, so what you really want to do is, is if you had some giant kit from the asset store and it had like tons of stuff and you're only using three pieces of it, you probably only want to combine those three pieces, right? Uh, the other thing about this is when you load, you're going to load all the meshes and all of the textures for everything. So when you're thinking about your level design, uh, you really want to, you know, do this on the sort of collections of themed assets that go in a level. So you might have like a wall pack that has, you know, stone floors and walls and things like that. And you might have like a rock pack and you use the rock pack in like 12 levels, but you only use that stone floor in one level. Um, so what you'd probably want to do is combine the stone floor pack into one thing and do the, um, the stones uh, into another. And then, hey, if you use those stones in every level, then great. Um, you will load the whole collection um, because it's now all essentially one asset. Uh, and um, but yeah, if you if you design your data right, uh, you know how you're using your data in your levels, and then this can be a massive improvement to draw calls, uh, knocking you know two thirds of your draw calls away. Which if you're running in VR, if you're running on PC, if you're using a lot of kit bash stuff from the asset store. Uh, that you just kind of you know grabbed and put together, uh, then this can be a pretty pretty massive speed up for you. Um, so there's probably some other stuff I should talk about, but uh, I can do that in future videos. Uh, there is a question on how far I'll push this shader. Um, I'm just kind of trying to replicate uh, the standard shader uh, stuff right now. There's a lot of potential options in the future to like pack these arrays better because Unity uh, tends to not pack their textures. Um, and so that would speed up the shader a bit. Uh, obviously the stuff for like, you know, different workflows. Um, but otherwise I'm basically going to try and get as much of the, st the standard shader stuff in here and working so that it's very, very easy to just, uh, hit a button and convert. Now, if you're running from a non-standard shader, um, maybe you've got some custom ones, it'll still all work. Uh, it just may not find all your textures because it's going to look for certain key names that are based on the standard shader. Um, and you can still drag all those textures in and set it all up manually uh, on each group. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I still have a bunch of work to do on this, um, but hopefully this is useful to people. And uh, let me know what you think of it, and, uh, you know, if you have any particular requests or things that you think would be useful for your uh, particular use case. And, uh, yeah, I hope to get this finished up and on the Asset Store uh, relatively soon. Uh, I kind of have a, have a backlog of things that I've written and just haven't released yet. So I need to start focusing on releasing, which unfortunately pushes me into like doing marketing images and things like that, which I'm loath to do. Uh, but I'll get it done and then start releasing some of this stuff. And so hopefully that'll be useful. Thanks.